If you Google are capybaras legal to own, in the information that pops up, it will say that they are legal to own in the state of Pennsylvania. And as somebody who has lived in the state of Pennsylvania with capybaras, I can tell you this information is very misleading. And today, we're going to talk about that. Crazy Cody's Creatures. Are capybaras legal to own in Pennsylvania? How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the 5,000 plus new subscribers that have joined the channel in the month of October. Welcome. My name is Cody. I post a lot of videos of capybaras and wildlife that I encounter. I also post videos of museums that I go to and UFOs from time to time. And in this video, I'm going to talk about owning a capybara in the state of Pennsylvania because I have legally owned a capybara in the state of Pennsylvania and can tell you what it's like to have one there. So as I said in the beginning, if you Google is illegal to own a capybara, the information that comes up says that they're legal to own in Pennsylvania. And it makes it seem like you can just go out and get one and you don't need any kind of paperwork or special training or anything like that to have one, which is very far from the truth. In the state of Pennsylvania, you need to have a special permit that's called a wildlife menagerie permit. And I had one of these permits and there are specific requirements you need to meet in order to have this permit and to keep capybaras in the state of Pennsylvania. So this is the list of requirements to apply for a wildlife menagerie permit in the state of Pennsylvania. Fully complete the application and list the animals to be exhibited. The applicant shall provide documentation of at least two years experience of hands-on work with the designated species. A letter of approval from a local government body must accompany the application and it also costs $100 to apply for a menagerie permit. But let's talk a little bit more about that two years of experience and that letter of approval from a local government body. So documentation of at least two years of hands-on work experience with a capybara was not difficult for me to show. I had had JoJo for almost four years, I had vet records, I had a receipt from when I purchased him, I had this YouTube channel, I think I had written down some of the links and sent them over as well in the application. But if you don't have any of this experience, you're gonna need to go out and get it. You're gonna need to volunteer at a zoo or find someone that has a capybara and get the experience and get the documentation in order to show the state that you know what you're doing to have a capybara. The other thing that needs to accompany the application is a letter of approval from your local government body. And what that means is, is you have to go down to your local courthouse and ask if they have any laws that say you can't have a capybara in the town. And if they don't, they'll give you a letter of approval saying, hey, Cody can have a capybara in this town and you send it in. Now it seems weird that a town would have a law in Pennsylvania that says you can't have a capybara. They might not have a specific law on capybaras, but they might have a more general law. Like one town I called said that their ruling was if you owned less than 10 acres of land, you could only own a dog or a cat. The place I ended up moving they didn't care what you had as long as you didn't exceed 2,000 pounds of animals per acre of land. So after you've filled out the application and you've got your documentation of at least two years of hands-on work experience with capybaras and your letter of approval from the local government body saying that they don't have any laws saying you can't have a capybara and you've got your check for $100 in the envelope and it's mailed in, the next step is going to be an inspection. The state of Pennsylvania has very specific requirements as far as caging goes for capybaras and all animals that are on the menagerie list. These are the enclosure requirements for having a capybara. Now in the state of Pennsylvania, enclosure requirements for capybaras are grouped together with a few other animals. So pygmy hippos, tapirs, capybaras, giant anteaters, and the like all need to have a specific enclosure requirement, and those requirements are. For a single adult animal, the minimum cage size is 24 feet long by 15 feet wide, and the accessories they require is a stepped or non-skid pool that is 6 feet wide by 8 feet long and 4 feet deep. Not necessary for anteaters, and increase the horizontal dimensions in cage and pool size by 30% for each additional animal. Now, when I lived in Pennsylvania, we actually had a number of capybaras and we had a very large enclosure. In fact, it was broken up into three smaller enclosures and was on rotating pastures that roughly took up about three acres. Now, those are the specific capybara requirements for the menagerie permit in the state of Pennsylvania. There's other more general requirements you need to have as well, such as you need to be an American citizen to get a menagerie permit. You need to provide them with a bill of sale and that the animal that you have is legally obtained 
mean you're not getting some black market capybara they want into that you need to have legal documentation that you obtain the animal legally uh, other things is you need to have shelter for inclement weather and it also needs to be climate controlled if the animal needs it so capybaras in the winter time in pennsylvania need it to be climate controlled it snows there it gets cold now some places will let their capybaras go out in the cold and in the snow and prolonged exposure can actually cause damage to capybaras ears and hands they can get frostbite and it's not good for them so in pennsylvania i had it to provide heated shelters in the winter time which you know everyone should do anyways because they're not a winter animal they're a tropical animal and they need to be kept warm in the winter time so to summarize, to have a capybara in the state of Pennsylvania, you need to have a menagerie permit, which requires at least two years of hands-on experience with capybaras. You also need to have a letter of approval from your local government body saying that they don't have any laws restricting ownership of capybaras in your area. You also need to be inspected by the state and meet all of their requirements for a capybara as far as sanitation and enclosures go. And you need to be USDA licensed as well now something else that i need to have was a wildlife importation permit and a certificate of health for jojo the capybara and a couple of other animals that required a menagerie permit that was bringing into the state of pennsylvania and i have a little bit of a funny story involving an african crested porcupine named snuggles when i brought her to the vet now if you've ever brought an exotic animal to the vet whether it be a capybara or in this case a african crested porcupine named snuggles it will draw the attention of everybody in the vet office to immediately come over and see what you brought in which makes sense because most people that are in vet offices love animals and snuggles the african crested porcupine was no exception now i had snuggles in a large open-air dog crate to make the health inspection go a little bit easier for everybody i had also given snuggles a kiwi so that way she had something to snack on and relax while we were at the vet and while we were there one of the vets came over and saw the kiwi looked up at me and then asked if that was an egg that she had just laid which I then had to explain that that was a kiwi and that porcupines are mammals and they give birth to live young and that they don't lay eggs. So that is my funny or weird or unusual story about the vet that asked me if the porcupine had laid an egg. Arizona. I also wanted to take a minute to talk about Arizona. I lived in Arizona when I got Jojo and in Arizona, they have a list of restricted species that you need to have a special permit for. Capybaras are not on that restricted list. So anybody can have a capybara. You just have to check with your local ordinances on whether or not they have a restriction for capybaras. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was thinking about making a video regarding capybara ownership in every state because I've been seeing a handful of maps on Facebook, like this one here that shows the legality of foxes in the United States, and this one here regarding kangaroos in the United States. But the one for kangaroos I don't think is accurate because it lists Arizona, Tennessee, and Delaware as states where it's illegal to have a kangaroo. And I know people in those states that own kangaroos, so unless something's changed, um, I think that map is actually wrong. But I could make one of these maps and a whole video regarding capybara ownership in every state if that's something you'd like to see. If it is something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comment section down below. So I looked a little bit further on the Arizona restricted species list and the only marsupial that I could find were American opossums. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this map here of the kangaroo legality is completely wrong. Also, on a side note, in the state of Arizona, all species of the order Xenothera are restricted, so you can't have sloths, anteaters, or armadillos. Also, I get a lot of comments regarding the bathroom habits of capybaras, putting it lightly, and if you've got those kinds of questions, I will leave links to two different videos in the description down below to fill all of your capybara bathroom needs. Also, if you like this shirt, here, Jojo the Capybara, and would like it, uh, I sell these in my merchandise store along with a couple other designs. The link to that is in the description down below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about capybaras, please check out the petcapybara.com. This is a website run by a good friend of mine named Stacy, and it's mostly about her pet capybara named Dobby. Stacy also wrote a book on what it's like to have a pet capybara, and this year, 2020, me, Stacy, and a number of other capybara owners teamed up for what we called the Year of the Rat. Each month we made a interesting, cute, little blog post featuring our capybaras doing just cute little stuff each month. And if you haven't checked that out, we have at least 10 blog posts up 
as of right now for you to enjoy all week long. So I'll have a link to that in the description down below. That again is the petcapybara.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, you can subscribe. If you really liked it, you can give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas, you can leave them in the comment section down below. I read and reply to everybody's comments. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Crazy Cody, and I'll see you guys later.